Today on The Big Questions, can capitalism save the planet? And is what you do more important than what you believe? <laughs> Oh, well, good morning. Great to see you. I'm Nicky Campbell. Welcome to The Big Questions. Today we're live from the Oasis Academy, Media City UK in Salford. What an audience. Welcome everybody to The Big Questions. <laughs> On Tuesday, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson declared that 2020 would be a defining year of climate action for the planet. The UK Citizens' Climate Assembly has its second meeting this weekend to consider how the UK will meet the zero emissions target by 2050. And Sir David Attenborough said, now is the moment for action on climate change. But confusingly to consumers and producers alike, grants towards buying electric cars are likely to be scrapped by the end of March, while at the same time the government is bringing forward a ban on new petrol and diesel vehicles from 2040 to 2035. And the 2020 United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, to be held in Glasgow this November, still doesn't have anyone willing to chair it. The list of those who've turned it down so far reads a little bit like a who's who of British politics. There are confusing choices facing every one of us. Free capitalist societies thrive on choice. Will capitalism save the planet? We have the co-founder of Extinction Rebellion, Gail Bradbrook here. Gail, good morning to you. Hi. You've, uh, Nick, you've you certainly know made, heart... wa you've made waves. Uh, my heart breaks in a way Does it? when we're debating. And of course we need to debate, but actually humanity needs to evolve. And what evolutionary steps require is that we face reality. We're killing life on Earth. I'm not in this camp or that camp. I want us to have a grown-up conversation about the changes that are needed. I'm sure as hell that there are things in this current system that we'll keep a hold of. But there are things that in it, systemic problems in it, that are clearly in the way. Because whatever this system is, it's had 30 years to sort this problem out. We've had 60% more carbon emissions. You need 1.7 planets to meet the resource needs. It's not working. And Mrs Thatcher said... Well, this is good. You'll like this, Matthew. Yeah, because you know, I was chatting to Gail earlier on, and she said, I want to read you something my Mrs Thatcher. Well, I love the... You know, <laughs> and, and, and I love Adam Smith. It's I'm not When you listen to what they had to say, mm. because the point is, what is the purpose of an economy? What's your what's The your purpose Thatcher, of the economy at the minute quote? is GDP, <laughs> what's right? What's your Thatcher quote? Mrs Thatcher said, yeah. we should always remember that free markets are a means to an end. They would defeat their object if, by, by their output, they did more damage to the quality of life through pollution than the well-being they achieve by the production of goods and services. And Milton Friedman, the father of neoliberalism, said that by preventing that the markets would, by preventing concentration of power, you prevent the kind of harm that real concentrated power can do. So I'm with Mrs. Thatcher and Milton Friedman that we have to look at the bigger picture and we have to have an economy that has a purpose. And the purpose has to be that we are minimising harm and maximising well-being. Now, how do we come up with a system that does that? You all have great ideas. You all have great ideas. Let's stop having a fight, That's folks. That's great. You're cool. I'm going to make a proposal, actually. The point is, the Davos elite have just met, right, and they've said, we're in an emergency. Great, they've got the message at last. You call yourself uh, the rebels, no, right? No, we're no, about no, social cohesion. You're creating a then and us. You're being no. a very rude capitalist. Because you've created yeah. a then and us. <laughs> no, That's no, what no, you Simon accused you of being a very rude capitalist. <laughs> well, I get things <laughs> done. I get what things done. Hold on, hold on. I want to get the thing Wait a minute, everybody. Wait a minute, everybody. Let's chill out with the pipe of peace just for a second. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. I'm just going to say... We're going to go to the audience in a minute, so I want some views from the audience and they can make some quick points and I'll skip around the studio. My goodness me, I didn't think that when I met the co-founder of Extension Rebellion, when we had a coffee earlier on, telling the virtues of Mrs Thatcher, <laughs> but there we are. What were you going to say? Finish your point. The, 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 the thing is, is, is I mean, I, I know when you get on the streets, you cause polarisation, but also you cause a debate, and that, that's why we did that. But Thunberg does it without your, right. your techniques. But anyway, you look, look, you, you, you've got the vote because of that kind of thing. you're fired. Carry on, Gail. The point here is, how do we go about solving this <laughs> existential threat that we're in? You so know, you need, what the process you need is. companies to yes. help you No, I'm, I'm totally with that. Right, can I finish my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're on the same page, love. So, what I want to say is, what's the process? 
by which you address what's the systemic issues and you solve them. It's not down to me. It's not down to this government or this elite. Trust the people. What we want in Extinction Rebellion is a global people's assembly with a load of economists, lots of different views and a process by which people come up with proposals for a systemic change. Is the head of BP going to be on that? Yeah, and an ordinary person and people from the global south that have frankly right. been, you know, yep. decimated. Ex exploited, decimated. <clears throat> so everybody in that room, representation from the globe and come up with a process. It's already defined how you do that process. That's what we want. I don't want to tell you what to do. Your ideas will be great, but yours will too. But where's the process? Where's the process? At the minute, the, the, the Davos elite have got too much skin in the game. Sorry, <laughs> they, got, they are benefiting right. from the system. All right, listen, I want to, who wants to be part of that process? That's what I'm going to ask you. And I think the policies that Matthew's organisation advocates have been running the world for the last 40 years. We've had a 40-year experiment with the question of whether those policies can save the planet, and the result is that the planet is on fire. Like, at what point would you accept that those policies aren't working and that we need to try something else? Christine, now, the question of what that something else should be. I, I'll come back. I will try and come back to you with the question. Because I just think so, it's really important right. because it's such yeah. a straw man, this, this Soviet-Russia yeah. point. Yeah. The, so the, the alternative that I would look to is, for example, Germany and Denmark, who have completely decarbonised their energy systems. They haven't done it by leaving it to the market. They've done it through state support, but not state socialism where the state runs everything. What they've done is supported community energy, cooperative energy, municipal energy. So you now have an energy system that is owned by the ordinary people of Germany who benefit from lower energy bills and that's low carbon. And these are the kind of win-win solutions that we need to be looking at. Okay. Which and this is, is about changing really the exciting, system. right? There are oh, so Gail. many good Excuse ideas me, out there. There yeah. are so many, you've got brilliant economists, um, Mariana Mazzucato, Molly Scott Cato, uh, um, yeah, MEP, yeah. blah, blah, blah. You know, there's, uh, <laughs> Paul Mason I like as well. But, you know, there's, there's loads of great ideas. Humanity is brilliant. You Paul know, Mason, we need to you start. Say? Paul Mason's a socialist, yeah? yeah? Pardon? So, Paul Mason, did you say? Well, I don't know how he defines himself. He talks about post-capitalism. I think, I think it's, you've got Kate Raworth with donor economics. There's not, we're not lacking good ideas. What we're lacking is a process to, to bring those good ideas forward. And this, uh, you know, going back to the fight again. So, you know, humanity can do this. We just need to give ourselves a chance. Yeah. So we, we and are things are, implementing that things process. Are, Gail, yeah. do people realise? Gail. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all right. I know, I know, I know. Do people realise how bad things are. I mean, China is a very good example because they continue to pollute. I know they're making some progress, but if you're in China, uh, saying what you say and hitting the streets like you hit the streets, I mean, Greta Thunberg, for example, you'd be seen as dangerous dissidents, wouldn't you? So how would you get, how do you actually get the message I mean, we've got a problem, a, a democratic problem across the world. Yeah. Half of trade goes through what's called secrecy jurisdictions or tax up, havens, right? Re 20 trillion in, in unpaid uh, taxes, in tax avoidance. It's not, that's not proper. Adam Smith wouldn't have been up for that. In fact, <laughs> you know, Adam Smith said you should be suspicious of any tr traders getting together because they've generally um, got interest to deceive and even oppress the public. You know, he, 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 he knows that you've got, to, you've got to regulate in some ways, right? Yeah, so I mean, we've had this Every country has anti, well, most have antitrust laws. You have to keep things in yeah, line with but the referee. What, what we've got is these massive um, breaks in so-called capitalism where you've got absolute corruption going off everywhere. So, you know, sure, China dictatorship, but just look at what it means for there to be, you know, tax not Gail, it's paid. against the law and hopefully... Well, no, the it's law, not. If you go acts. to another country, it's yeah. not against the law. Corinne, That's the what would you like to say? And so I said to that guy, you know what, you've hit my car. He looks at it, he said, I'm so sorry. I said, I completely forgive you. Do you want my insurance details? I said, no, I'm not interested. Now, Nikki, that's not me. That's an outworking of the Holy Spirit. That's how Jesus works. That's how the Holy Spirit works. And, and what's in fact, you find is what science has to say about this these days. Because I actually think science and spirituality are coming close to each other. We know, for example, that there's a brain in your heart, and religions are about love and listening to your heart, and in your way, having Jesus in your heart. And the Quaker faith says, take heed, dear friends, to the promptings of love and truth in your heart. So you have, you, you, uh, also we know that the DMT molecule is there when you're born and when you die. And some people call that the God molecule. Uh, we know that neuroplasticity is very similar to doing ceremony. So there's a, there's a coming together of understanding of science and spirituality. And I think the question is, how do we live the best possible lives? And we're all individuals. We're going to have a different way Warren, of doing that, you know. But I just think earning and learning and trying to work it out is, is religion. The reality yeah. of a relationship with God is a lot, lot simpler. Yeah. The gospel is very, very simple. That's why Jesus chose fishermen. It's not, it's not difficult. <laughs>